Hey what is going on everyone, I'm Wicked, welcome back to my Dart from Novice to Expert complete course. In the previous tutorial, we finally finished talking about Dart packages. As we're approaching the tutorials in which we'll start coding in Dart, in today's video I'm going to introduce you to some tips and tricks on how you can structure your code, mainly on how to write fast, maintainable and easy to understand Dart code. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Beforehand though, I want to send a token of appreciation to everyone supporting me as official YouTube members, especially to Diana and Michael aka Aza on Discord. If you want to become a member, all you have to do is to click the join button right next to my channel and pick your desired membership. Having that said, let's continue with our tutorial. Now let me ask you a quick question. Has there been a moment in your programmer's life in which you looked over an old project and understood almost nothing from the code you wrote a couple of months ago? If so, this happened probably because you're writing unorganized, inconsistent and overly complex code. This is true not only with Dart, but with any other programming language out there. From my experience, there are three rules you should follow in order to start improving the way you write code. Be organized and consistent with your code. Write minimalist and simple to understand code and always test every piece of code you write. The first rule refers to the fact that before starting a new project, whether you're working on a team or alone, you should set your own code objectives like how you'll format the code, how you're going to name functions, variables, when you're going to refactor the code, how you're going to structure your files and directories inside the root of your project, etc. This might seem like an obvious step, but believe me, it's overlooked many times. Just grab a piece of paper and make a simple plan on how you're going to write your code. It's going to save you tons of time when developing a huge project in the long run. The second rule, even though it seems self-explanatory, is probably the hardest to achieve and follow during the development phase. What I want to highlight here is that after you write a piece of code, perhaps a new feature or a new function, you should glance over it and check if you can make it more simple and minimalist. By minimalist, I don't mean writing the entire implementation into a single line of code. By minimalist, I mean thinking smart on how you can optimize the code to become simpler to understand and perhaps more performance efficient. So, the main idea would be to double check the code you write before moving on to the next step. As I said, this is probably the hardest thing to do since sometimes you'll just spend your entire day coding a feature and you'll definitely overlook checking the code again if it works in order to optimize it. This rule also covers the fact that you shouldn't rush the development process. I mean, I know, there are deadlines to follow, but I really believe the key to success is being optimized. I prefer writing three features of stable, organized and minimalist code in three weeks, rather than writing them in one week in a haywire manner than spending the time to understand what you coded. And speaking of coding, testing the code you write denotes the third and last rule I follow for a fast, stable, consistent and robust code flow. I can definitely understand developers not wanting to test the code they write for a small app that can be manually tested each time they run it. However, for a bigger project, you can't really do that. The idea here is that for each and every piece of code or feature you write, there should be a test in which you verify that it performs as expected. This way, in the future, writing more and more code won't slow you down by having to manually retest all previous functionalities, since they'll be already covered up by your tests. You'll see what I mean when we'll start writing Dart code in a couple of tutorials from now on, since everything we'll code will be tested accordingly. So basically, in order to stick to the rules I mentioned before, Dart offers a list of guides that are linked to specific lint rules. You can actually go ahead and enter dart.dev, browse to the efficient Dart topic and you'll see all of the rules split between four categories, style, documentation, usage and design. So you might see there are a lot, and by a lot I mean a lot of lint rules. Obviously I won't cover them since it would literally take me hours to make this tutorial. Instead, I invite you to take a more thorough look over all of them on dart.dev website. This is more of a holy bible of Dart you should really get to read before starting developing apps. As you already know from my previous tutorials, in the Dart ecosystem, 
the Dart Analysis Server uses the Analyzer package to perform static analysis. The file managing all of these for your package is the analysis underscore options that YAML file, which should be placed at the root of the package, exactly in the same directory as the pubspec.yaml file. Now you might wonder, what happens if you don't include an analysis options file inside your package? Will the project use no analyzer? Well, no. If no file is found, the analyzer defaults to standard checks only. So, if we take a look at a sample analyzer options file, you will see that similarly to the pubspec.yaml file, it comes with some fields worth discussing. The include file provides the option to integrate the content of perhaps another file from another package to the current analysis option file. You might remember from a previous tutorial, we had this set to the analysis option file from inside the pedantic package, meaning that all the lint rules from inside pedantic were included in our analysis options file. The analyzer file provides a respectable amount of customization to our static analyzer. For example, we can enable stricter type checks, exclude files inside of which we don't want the analyzer to do its job, ignore specific rules while also changing the severity of them, and we can also enable some experimental features. Inside the linter field, you can provide a list containing some of the lint rules I showed you earlier. However, as you saw, this part was already included with a pedantic package we added at the top of our analysis underscore options file. And with that said, it's time to end another tutorial of this amazing series. I hope you understood how the static Dart analyzer works and how it interacts with the analysis options file in order to make sure our coding plan persists during the entire development phase of our app. The next tutorial will be really, really important since we'll get our head into the huge topic of Dart sound null safety. One of the most important additions to Dart language you really need to understand and practice. As always, if you like this tutorial, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel and share the video with all of your friends and colleagues in pursuit of top tier development. Until next time, as always, take care, Wicked is out. Bye-bye.